so uh, maybe we can get out a little bit early. Um, the first order of business is the uh, roll call, and I think everyone is here except Sheila. Anybody yeah, else missing? She's excused. Yeah, and she's excused. She's on an airplane in Mexico at the moment. Okay. Um, does anybody want to be chair? I think everybody raising their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Dave would be an excellent yeah, chair. Yeah, I think Dave too. Mm -hmm. And I'm are we ready, ready for nomination? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nominations are open for a president. I nominate uh, Dave as president. The same guy did it last <laughs> time. I second. I second. Yeah. So yeah. Is, is there a second to that? You got it. You got yeah. We got several. Of them. Yeah. Any discussion? Uh, let me say, I'm going to repeat my campaign speech of last year. And Jeff said, you don't need to do that, you got it, if you want it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I think I think that uh, a role of an advisory board, I might have a little bit different view of an advisory board than most people do. I think an advisory board, there's two kinds of boards. There are cheerleaders, you know, or the staff of the agency brings in people and you tell them how good their programs are and you give them suggestions on all that sort of thing. But you're basically just supportive of the agency that you're on board to. Then there's the other kind of board, which I think is prepared, and I think it's in line with the ordinance that we talked about last week, and that is we need to be active as far as making recommendations, trying to influence policy, even try to influence, influence legislation. And so I see, I try to make the board as active as possible, and that's where I'm coming from. And then sometimes people think maybe I'm going maybe a little bit too far, I just have a couple of instances of that. But that's, so if you elect me, you'll be more of the same. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. I think that sounds exactly what we should be doing. Yeah. All right, the nominations are closed. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> All right. Vice President. You still have the crown. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that Art has done a good job. Why not keep him on? I uh, I appreciate it, but uh, my reason for trying to get somebody else here, this is my last year. I'm on my sixth year, and I'm only going to be here for a few more months. And so what I'm saying is I would like to see somebody else that not that there's that much to do as a vice president except when Dave can't make it or whatever but uh i'd like to see somebody else get on there that might be interested in eventually becoming a president you know, yeah you know what I'm i know you're working your vote off too in the circumstances yeah too. right <laughs> yeah. um so i'd like to see if anybody else might be interested let me just say that, if, you know, there's a lot of new people on the board, right. and that doesn't prevent you from being a vice president if you want to be. Uh, it would be good training, you know, to be vice uh, president, because I'm not your daughter, so I'm going to be another year. So, you know, if you want to do that, it'd be a good, good way to learn about some of the things that we do. Lonnie, do you have any interest in it? Sure. Well, there's one. Good. Excellent. How many others are interested? Okay, are there, is there anyone else that's interested? We didn't have a big political fight here. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of those going on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there any further nominations? All right, any discussion? Nominations? Oh, I just want to say that I'll fully support what you talked about, what you mentioned as okay. far as the advisory board. I think that's exactly what we should be doing. Very good. Well. And Very well. uh, yeah. We tend to fully support the whole board and Dave. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, did I say nominations are closed? All right. All those in favor of Lonnie for vice president say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstentions? Congratulations. <laughs> I get the other crown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, approval of the agenda. Did you get the one? No. 
I have a I have a question. Mm -hmm. Don't we also have to have a scribe, a secretary? No. No. We do not. I do not know that. I didn't either. As a matter of fact, I brought it up a, a few weeks ago that we needed a secretary, and I checked the organs. We don't call for a secretary. We say we've got president and vice president. Am I right on that? That's my understanding. Yeah. Um, other uh, divisions around the city has has a staff member. Yeah. Oh, oh. So I didn't know that. Yeah. I would just like to say, uh, uh, along those rounds, is seven of us attended the orientation. Um, and at that orientation, it was said that staff are provided for advisory boards, or a, a board member could do it. Um, but I guess my thinking is, if we're expected, according to what all of the information it said in here in the orientation, to be active and be <clears throat> aware and, <clears throat> and, you know, be open to everything that's in the meeting and pay attention, it's hard to take minutes at the yes. same time, right? Um, so, well, based we, on that, I think it's a little difficult. You know, last year, I, I really can't speak for uh, Beth and uh, who's the other one we didn't show? No, no Janine. Janine. No, not Janine either. The one that we had before, uh, Ruth. Ruth. They were chief. They were both secretaries, and it, it was just too much. I think. It, I think. I don't know. They didn't say that, but I have a feeling that that was part of the reason they resigned. It was just too much. You know, they had full lives. They had responsibilities. It was just tough. So, but anyway, I so I, you know, that's that's actually that's that's good. Yes. I, 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 I hope you do we understand who is taking the minutes? Yeah, it's uh, is that Amy? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bianca. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> Pops out of nowhere. <laughs> and we appreciate that. We really do. Yes, do. yes, well, thank you. You guys take such excellent minutes. I tell you, it's just like I when I read through the minutes, it's just like I was there again. Yeah. You just no, show I mean, that in a good way. <laughs> Pardon me? I said, can you take shorthand on the computer? <laughs> All right. So, are there any um, are there any additions to the agenda? To the minutes. Uh, okay. If the hearing none, uh, would someone move to approve the agenda? I'll move. Uh, are there any moves? Is there a second? Second. Uh, Seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the previous month's minutes. Um, I assume everybody's had a chance. Did you get this stuff this morning? This Thank morning? You. No. Uh, no, I saw it six thirty. Uh, I forgot to send them last night. We woke up in the middle of the night. Well, that's why I didn't see it yesterday. Uh, I thought I was just behind on my email. Yeah, uh, no, they're, they're there. It's just late. So we've got our agenda. I was wondering if it'd be possible for us to start under new business A, just to allow Amy an opportunity to uh, kind of do a quick presentation on our uh, recreate, senior recreation program. Okay. And then I'll start to go catch up on a lot of her work, okay. if, that, if that's okay. Uh, sure. So we have to approve the minutes. We didn't approve the minutes, did we? No. no. Yes. Okay. So, I've, heard, I've read through them. I have filed. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, makes the motion. Is there a second? Alani makes a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, we will move to item A, Senior Recreation Program Overview. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Do we think it might be a little better to turn the lights off for this, or are we okay with the moment? What do we think? Yeah, I think so. Turn them off? I can't see it all. Okay. Yeah. And for those of you in the front row, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Better? Better. Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, my name is Amy Hodge. I'm our Seniors Recreation Program Supervisor. Been here with the City of Longmont, so it's crazy, but about six months. It feels like just got going yesterday, so very excited to be here, be a part of this program, and talk to you all a little bit today about what our Recreation Programming Division does, as well as some of the things that maybe kind of aren't within our scope of care, but we can help connect and create resources for. So um, as, you're, as you know, we have kind of two main divisions here at our center. Uh, 
Uh, we have the recreation programming side, and we have our supportive services side. Uh, I understand Brandy's probably going to be coming in to a meeting soon to speak a little bit more to what our supportive services division does. But today, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my background, what we're doing here for our programs, and some of our goals for the future. So when we talk about how I got here, um, I'm originally from Missouri. I've been in Colorado a little over six years. And during uh, my college years at Northwest Missouri State, I was a softball player through my sophomore year, then decided to pull out my knee and that was the end of that. <laughs> so um, that also kind of changed my perspective on what I wanted to do with my career. My mom was also diagnosed with multiple sclerosis right around that time. And that really made me shift from an athletic training mindset to working with special populations to let them enjoy their quality of life through the end of their life. And a lot of that can come through leisure. So I completed degrees in corporate wellness as well as therapeutic recreation, which we'll talk about a little bit more here in a little bit, with a minor in gerontology. I always loved working with the aging community. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up and kind of approached this role as everybody's my grandparent, and I want to make sure they're receiving the same care that I would have given to my grandparents. Um, from Northwest, I actually started the first five years of my career working in geriatric forensic psychology as a recreation therapist. Learned a lot not only about aging, but about people. People generally just have a need they're trying to get met, and how can I help you meet that need or overcome barriers to meet that need? Um, after working in forensic psych, I moved down to Kansas City and worked at Truman Medical Centers, which is a level one trauma center in urban Kansas City. Um, worked in the acute psychology department as a recreation therapist. Started working for employee wellness part-time in that time, teaching group fitness and personal training. Transitioned to their corporate wellness side of things within the hospital and ran our employee wellness program for a 5,000 member um, employee population. So kind of having both the client facing perspective as well as the staff perspective, figured out corporate wellness was not my jam and moved over to Community Rec, which is where I have been since 2017. During that time, completed my master's degree in kinesiology with an emphasis in sport management, and then started working for the City of Liberty, which is a lot like Walmart. It's about the same size. Um, think of like a Arvada, Longmont, um, about 100,000 people, and worked with their senior services division as well as their health and wellness areas, which really got me into the aging side of community work. And it's just part is what brought me out here. Moved out here in early 2018, was recruited to help them open their rec center. For them, I ran their athletics division, as well as their fitness and general programming. I was living in Greeley at the time. As you know, that's a bit of a drive <laughs> from Greeley to Estes. So I wanted something a little closer to home, and the perfect opportunity came available with the Eden Area Park and Rec District. Um, it was aging and fitness, which are my two loves. Got to bring them together and was with Eden for about five years. Continued with them and took over their general recreation as well as athletics program in accordance with aging and fitness and became a supervisor for that entity. And then we came here. As I was working at Eaton, I learned more and more I wanted to be in the aging community and this role allowed me to bring that. It allowed me to bring not only the leadership skills that I acquired together, but also to come to a community that is very focused on our aging population and provides a wealth of opportunities. I don't know if you all know, there's a few things going on here, more so than really anywhere else I've seen. So it's great to be a part of it, and that's what has got me here today. In our field, um, it's super important to keep up to date on trends in the industry. Things are always changing. What might have been the case three years ago may not be the case today. So we wanna ensure we're keeping up to date and I encourage my team to do the same. Actively involved in the Colorado Parks and Rec Association. And this year I'm actually serving as the board chair for their active aging programs and services division. So I get to interact with professionals around the state in aging, hear what they're doing at their centers, 
learn about what the challenges in the industry are, anything trending we're seeing. Um, so it's a really great way to stay connected and help promote our aging community as well. Um, I'm also a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. And these individuals are licensed professionals who work with special populations and individuals with disabilities. I don't know if you know, aging is its own special population. So that falls within this degree. And I use it day in and day out here at our center. Um, I also sit on the National Exercise Trainer Certification Board for their personal training and group fitness certifications. I'm a certified personal trainer, group fitness instructor. Um, I teach people how to perform CPR, AED, and first aid as an instructor, full wellness coach, and I'm a 500 hour registered yoga teacher with a 100 hour, 100 hour emphasis on aging. I don't know if you're seeing a trend here. It all comes back to aging and wellness. These are things that are very important to me and I want to make sure I'm doing my part to stay up to date on what's happening in the industry, how we can help support our senior population, as well as make sure that we're staying within our scope as professionals. Everybody hanging in so far, now that we're through the boring stuff? So NCTRC is the governing body for therapeutic recreation. This really dictates what we can and cannot do with our license. Um, again, the NETA, is the National Exercise Training Association. Yoga Fit is the entity that I went through for yoga. And all of these are NCAA accredited. So in order for these agencies to maintain NCCA accreditation, they have to follow safety guidelines, science guidelines, industry guidelines, as well as social and cultural awareness guidelines. So excited to be a part of companies that actually keep those things in mind when we're looking at how we provide services. And security with us. So recreation programming as a whole is designing staging and delivering leisure opportunities by intervening social interactions, manipulating and creating environments where people feel welcome in a manner that maximizes the probability that those who enter will have the experience they seek. Has anybody participated in programs here? I would hope so. Yes. Those are experiences, right? Our goal is to create those experiences based not only on the foundations of what recreation programming is, but hearing from you. What do you all want? And how can we make those things happen? Uh, we look to enrich lives through quality recreation services. That's assessing what works well, what doesn't, and continually evaluating. Creating community connections, I think, is a huge piece of what we do. We want to have people feel like they're part of something. We want people to learn what is available in our community and help them build new relationships. And then create an environment where individuals have the opportunity for educational, social, emotional, cognitive, and physical well-being. So therapeutic recreation is kind of a, a special entity. We have a um, CTRS, Ariana, that we share um, with the rec center. I don't know if you all know her. If you don't, you should get to know her. Um, she and I both are recreation therapists, and the goal of recreation therapy is to purposefully utilize leisure in an effort to help people not only have those experiences, but overcome the barriers that may keep them from getting to those experiences. These can be in clinical settings, these can be in community settings like we're working in here, but we want to create, help people create a sense of wellness identity. Um, think about where you are in your life. Have you ever told yourself, well, I used to like to do this, but now I, I do this because of X. Well, how can we get you back to doing what you used to like to do in a way that meets you where you are right now? Um, we use recreation-based um, medical treatment to help people reduce depression, stress, anxiety, and recover from physical and mental abilities, build confidence and socialize. And with that, Ariana has created a new part of our program here called the AIR program. You may see it in our Spring Go, and that stands for Aging, Adaptive, and Inclusive Recreation. AIR, much easier to remember, right? So as I mentioned earlier, aging is a TR special population. How can we create experiences so that people can be met where they are, not feeling overwhelmed or underwhelmed, and provide some opportunities for people who maybe felt like they weren't at that level to be able to participate 
as a whole. How can we create those experiences? And that's the goal of our AIR program. So our scope of care, um, we start by assessing what the needs are, creating a plan, implement that plan, and then evaluate if that plan is making sense. That's kind of the baseline goal of recreation as a whole. Um, we want to provide services in accordance with our training, our experience, and the terms of our licensure. One of the big things that that governing body of TR dictates is, as much as I work maybe in the clinical realm, I'm not a doctor. You don't want me performing surgery, but I'm part of a collaborative team that can help create the ability to overcome maybe some barriers. So a good um, translation to that in a community setting, we're all part of the city of Longmont, right? We all have our specialties within the city of Longmont, and while I may be very good at recreation, I don't know that I'm the person you want doing irrigation. That's just not me. <laughs> now I could learn, I could try, but we want to stay within what our scope and our education allows us to do. Otherwise, we could potentially lose our license, can't work anymore, and then my dog's not going to be very happy because she can't eat. <laughs> so it's good to kind of understand that there are those boundaries within what we can and cannot do um, that are dictated by these governing agencies. But we collaborate in those community and clinical settings to refer out to the experts. If there's something we can't handle, Hopefully we have those connections built, we've built those relationships, so we can find the people who are the experts and can handle different scenarios if we're not your people. Um, we also wanna create fun, safe, and diverse experiences to help people maintain their independence, as well as improve quality of life and recreate that wellness identity. Because we have that for our whole life. Think about what helps make you feel well, not just physically. What fills your cup each day? what allows you to feel like you have purpose. This is part of what our goal is in our recreation programming division. Everybody still with me? You doing okay so far? Um, so City of Longmont Services, um, for the Senior Services Division, um, we as recreation programmers create educational endeavors, think our history, wellness lectures, different things like that. Um, we are very fortunate here to have our resource and supportive services division. I hope you all know how wonderful it is to have that here. It's not everywhere. Most entities, the person in my role, a one-man show, is also providing those connections and referring out. We have professionals on site who can provide those services to our community. Um, we provide arts and creative pursuits, socialization, travel, which we're working on very diligently, cultural enrichment programs and special events, humanities and culture and technology. And one of the big things that I've really tasked our team with is how are we measuring the success of our programs? Is it that qualitative data where we talk about those experiences? How did people feel? What did they see? How did they interact? Uh, was it fun? Did they meet someone new? But we also have quantitative data. Are these events and programs being attended? That's important. We also have survey results and feedback that we get from our community. How many offerings are we able to provide to our community? Not only within our scope, but within the resources on our team. And then are we staying within our budget? <coughs> so I wanted to share with you, um, we did a team building workshop for our programming team, which consists of myself, Terry Calvin, and Valerie Rodriguez, who are our Seniors Recreation Program Coordinators, and then Ariana, who is our part-time Therapeutic Recreation Coordinator. And for their goals in 2024, I had them all write down their personal and professional goals, compared and contrasted those goals, and found where we had similarities. And made these the foundational pil pillars of what we're trying to provide to our seniors. Um, we want to build relationships and community partnerships we want to expand our programs and be innovative. We've got a lot of great foundational things here. I like to think about it like a house. The house is here, but how can we decorate the house? How can we make it even better while maintaining the quality programs that are already happening? We wanna look at process improvement. How can we make things more functional for staff, for our community? How can we clean up processes that, let's be honest, it sounds like there's been a little bit of turnover here. <laughs> Let's acknowledge that 
and find where some things fell through the cracks and bring them back up to standard. Budget and contracted services, we wanna make sure we're providing opportunities within what our budget allows, and maybe even seeking sponsors or grants to help support beyond what our budget allows and how generously the Friends Board gives to our programs as well. And then finally, professional development. Talked a lot about that career path. It's important that us as professionals continue to understand how our industry is changing, what someone in their 80s wants versus what someone in their 50s wants, and how can we meet the needs of both. And then finally, I asked everyone, what's our why? Why do you come here each day? Why do you do what you do? What drives you? What challenges you? And the big overwhelming thing I heard was to provide a space where people know they're not forgotten, people know that they are cared for, people can be mentally and physically stimulated. And that was fantastic to hear because that is the foundation of why we build everything we do. And I'm happy to share this with anyone who would like it. It's a little small on here, but within each of those um, areas that we identified through our personal and professional goals, created some objectives for the year. So taking those goals, breaking them down even a little bit more within what we can do, and then asking if there's something we can't do, why not? That's our goal, and trying to work around that. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. So in regard to your attendance at these programs, mm -hmm. do, do you ever get to the point where a program is not viable anymore because of lack of attendance, or how do you, how do, you do that? And I'm really glad, it's Arlene, right? Yes. I'm really glad you're asking those questions. Um, one of the things when we were starting to really dig in deep here and looking at what programs made sense, we, we have to look at attendance. Uh, Ronnie's gonna hit the lights for us, so if you have sensitive eyes like me, get ready. That's how my dad used to wake me up in the morning. Put <laughs> that light on. Um, but um, attendance is super important. And one of the areas that we're starting to really look at is our dropping groups. If we're having the same three to four people come each time and it's taking up a room where we're already busting at the seams trying to find where to put different classes, does that class continue to make sense? So we're really gonna start to monitor that attendance on a daily basis to get that data. Um, also, I think feedback from participants is very important in that. If this is something that we're just doing to do, but we're not having the experience that we maybe once had, how can we shift that? How can we adapt that? So that attendance is something that we're starting to track um, this year, even more in depth, to get that data, to make those decisions. I mean, I might be one of the three people that comes to that group religiously and I love it, but if 38 people want to come to something else on a regular basis, what makes sense? How are we best fitting the needs of our overall population? Does I answer that question? Yes, I'm glad to do that. Mm -hmm. Is grant writing something you've done before? Have you done before? <coughs> is successful? Um, I'm not as familiar with here. Historically, I'm still fairly new to law. I'm not still learning. Um, I have written grants before. Um, I actually helped to get a new bus, a minibus, for one of the centers that I worked at previously. Um, I believe the city itself has some experts in writing grants that we can also look to if we are seeking additional funding or resources. What other questions? Yes, I'd like to know, how do you measure the diversity of this in the different programs? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, and I know you don't want to ask them what, what grades they are or whatever, but is there any way that the instructor or someone like this would have an idea of how many people are actually Spanish speaking mm -hmm. or bilingual or whatever yeah. type of a thing? That's a really good question. Um, we haven't touched much on our Spanish program, so I'll let Ronnie kind of take the lead on so that. So one thing we're evaluating is our registration <coughs> system and what data we can track through that process. And so um, that's something we're exploring at this time. Right now, currently, do we have anything in place? No, we don't. Um, and, and that's that as Amy mentioned we're just continuing to evaluate a lot of our systems um, and structures that were in place before we all got here right and how do we improve them how can we collect this data and information to really paint that picture of who we're serving and at what capacity 
So we are, we are evaluating our current rec track systems, our software, mm -hmm. registration to see what we can do um, to, to collect that information. So that'll, that'll, that'll help, but at this time, no. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, because huh? I think I, one of the things I felt over the past is when we bring this up, uh, there's not a real good answer as to why we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like we're Yes. You're listening to what we're asking. Yes. Okay. So a lot of these things will never come overnight or you know next week or next month, and then everything is a process, especially when we're looking at software. <laughs> so um, so it, but it is something we're exploring. What kind of time are you looking at in getting that software? In? So we've got a couple things um, going right now. Um, we have a, a whole new team, um, and so we are not only getting everybody up to speed to how to how to navigate this software. But from there, um, same in, in that same conversation, what, are, what can we do to improve it? So while they're going through these trainings, we're we're looking at the experts with the software um, to see what we can update and change to track specific, not track uh, that's a bad word, right? To collect specific information and data to support um, you know the work that we're doing here at the senior center. Let's talk about data collection more. Yeah, and mm -hmm. just as an example of something we can do with our software, so you might start seeing this soon is we're trying to figure out on a marketing basis, how are people hearing about what we've got going on? So you might hear that question of, well, how did you hear about this? Was it our go? Was it word of mouth? Was it a flyer? Was it our social media presence? If we can collect that data and see where our community is getting this information, we know where to push that information out more. And that's a capability of this program that I think could correlate to what we're trying to seek, it sounds like, for that demographic. So there are the capabilities, it's just learning the technology. Are there any more questions? Any other things? Where did you find her? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty good. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The qualifications are very impressive. Yeah, yeah. impressive. Yeah. Very nice. impressive. Did you have a quick question? Uh, yeah, how do you recommend, and my name is Eric. Eric, How do you recommend a new program? So if, as a guest perhaps, or as a, team or both? Both. both. Um, so um, from the customer facing perspective, mm -hmm. come see us. Um, one idea from a previous facility, I actually had this to share with Ronnie earlier this week, but I've been under the weather a little bit. So surprise, sorry. <laughs> um, we, um, in a, another facility had a program request form where we had people fill out, hey, I'd like to see this. These are the days that I would prefer. And if we get enough of those requests, or it's something we can accommodate, that provides us that pattern of structural data to help build something new. Or we can always come talk to us or email us. The offices are not scary. Please come say hi. Does that answer uh, that question? Art, do you have one more question? Well, yeah, one, uh, one more is that I like that question there is that uh, you say that the participants uh, fill out a form at the end of the class. That's the so like a survey perhaps? Yeah. Um, that sounds like something that's happened in the past year that we'd love to try and bring back. Uh, I can candidly say we're finally getting our feet under us a little bit. Um, we have a very experienced team, but we're learning a new culture. We're learning a new community. We want to meet the needs of that community. And a part of that is getting that feedback. Because I was going to say, that'd be a good place to ask the question of mm -hmm. what new programs would you like to yeah, see? Yeah, that's a great idea too. And you know, I don't know what you're saying. You got your form or something like that, but I don't know if this place has ever suggested a has a, has ever had a suggestion box or yeah. something like that. But just getting any kind of input we can get to. Right. Another one we did at a former facility was we did have a comment box or a suggestion box. Whatever staff member was um, the point for that. For example, like if it was fitness, it would come to me. If it was aquatics, it would go to the aquatics coordinator. Here it could be resource programming, we would actually post what the comment was and then a response to it. Kind of like with a stoplight system, green is absolutely, we can accommodate that. Thank you for mm -hmm. bringing that up. Yellow is like a more, this is a possibility, we would have to explore it more. Red would be your stop of, I don't know that this makes sense here, or it's something we can do within our budget staffing, but that way at least we're showing that people are being heard, are being heard. we're not just kind of pushing these suggestions aside. When I say we're listening with open ears, 
we're listening with open ears. So. Okay, well, thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. It's very good, yeah. very interesting. If anybody else does think of residual questions, first page of the go, if you open up and on the top, Amy, we have two Amy's. Um, so, Amy Hodge, if you want to call, email, or stop by the office, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. Good question. We find her, we were lucky. Yeah, we were lucky to find Amy. Um, and, I, and I've been talking about our team for, for a very long time about how lucky we are finding these pieces to build the current team we have. And we're just in a fantastic spot right now with the experiences that we have, the knowledge in her, Amy specifically, through her supervisory skills, being able to evaluate, again, our current systems and structures. How do we take the things that are going well? How do we make them better? How do we make uh, what we're doing um, start to finish more efficient and more effective? And so um, she, she's just very organized in that space. So very lucky to have her and to keep her. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Do we have a three-year commitment, five-year? <laughs> Ten-year contract. Depends on how nice Ronnie is. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Thank but, you. Um, Ronnie? Yes. I just want to make a quick comment. Every, I know how much you've spoken about putting your team together and doing it very intentionally, very slowly, and getting the very best. And every single time I've met a new person in their positions, they've been very impressive. And I think you're putting together a great team here. Thank you. And I think they're beginning to work, you know, they're not just beginning, but they're working well together and they're coming together. And I've just been impressed on how things are, are uh, you know, working with the whole new team. I appreciate that. Thank you. And the, the chemistry um, does speak for itself. You know, it takes time to build that, and all of them instantly they able to just build on, take it each other's strengths, um, to support each other in our program, and continue to move it forward um, at a faster rate than I anticipated. And just everything they're doing is fantastic. So, very fortunate right now. Well, kudos to the team, and kudos for you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you everyone. All Have right. Thank team. you. All right. Uh, I think. This is mainly for the newer members, the old people, the people that have been around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> We're all <laughs> We're all yeah. uh, Most of this last year, we have been working on three areas. We talked about it a little bit. We've been talking about housing, transportation, and outreach. And I'm um, and Lonnie and Shirley, not Shirley, Sheila, uh, have been doing housing. The transportation has been done by uh, Arlene. And Beth and Art were doing the outreach, and Beth resigned, so I kind of filled in for Beth a little bit on the outreach. Anyway, the objective of all of this is to try to make some reasonable type of recommendations to the city as far as what we think should be done in these areas. These are tough areas, I think, especially housing is very difficult. But uh, that's the objective: is uh, to first uh, to to influence city council to go city uh, to go adopt policies, procedures, budget, whatever, in the direction that we would like it to go. Um, I think that if um, I, I think that maybe Lonnie could go ahead and outline, and you could start in your housing and say what kind of things you might recommend and then I would ask Arlene to do the same thing and Art and I will do the same thing for outreach. Um, I really don't know what you got to say. Your reports were very good, by the way. I can show, I can see that that represented a lot of work. So um, anyway, I, uh, I'm just looking forward to what you got to say. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what I wanted to do when I first started looking into housing, I realized that it's got so many, so many aspects to it. And uh, from the unhoused to people who can't afford to buy homes to um, transitional, you know, just the whole gamut. And I think I outlined it in the, I outlined it in the report. My intention was for everybody to understand what I was finding out. I wanted to put it all together in a document so that you can keep that and you can refer to it. So if you come up with any idea and you think, I wonder really what transitional housing is, you can go back to the document and you can get some information from it. I just wanted to make a comprehensive report 
on everything I found out. And that was my intention with the, in, the report I sent out. Um, I don't really want to go through that very much because I think everybody has the opportunity to read it on their own. But um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. I've just, you know, it's my knowledge of it has been expanding daily almost with getting the information that I needed. So um, if you have any questions, please just let me know. And uh, like I said, you can keep that report to where if you want, if you have any questions yourself and you want to get more information, uh, hopefully this is a whole roundup of, of all the different um, aspects of housing. So, but I do want to go through this. Um, this will be quick. Longmont population is approximately 10,000 and 19% are 65 and older close to the uh, proportion nationally. The median income in um, the median income in Longmont is 90K and for seniors 65K, with 25% of seniors having income below 20,000. 6% of seniors in Longmont are considered very poor with incomes less than 10,000. 63% of the Longmont population own their own home 78% of seniors are homeowners and 22% are renters. Senior homeowners experience financial hardships due to increased costs of mortgages, utilities, taxes, and other expenses. Current and future city ordinance changes to allow ADUs, duplexes, and higher density in existing neighborhoods can help to alleviate some of the hardships and will also loosen restrictions on new bills. These changes should be encouraged and expanded. That is gonna be one of the recommendations that come out of this is that we encourage them to change the um, zoning. Pushing for a change in the homestead property tax exemption to link the exemption to the homeowner rather than the property will encourage senior downsizing. In addition to limiting homeowners expenses, it will free up the tight market of larger homes. Seniors experiencing one-time financial shortfalls in paying for utilities, taxes, etc., need to be aware of the cash assistance that may be available through the Senior Center and by working with the city, county, and federal billing entity to arrange for alternate or alternative payment arrangements. Good communication is necessary and not always available. Senior renters tend to have lower incomes in their housing stability is more fragile than for homeowners. And it's this group that uses and needs the variety of public and private programs provided by Longmont. The Longmont Housing Authority, LHA, manages apartments for low-income residents, including seniors. They also manage the Section 8 program, including a voucher, and actually it's not called Section 8 anymore. It's called Housing Choice Voucher. Housing. Called housing choice. Housing choice. Housing choice. It's called housing choice. <clears throat> including a voucher wait list. The new low cost housing options, co supported by OHA, uh, Boulder County Housing Authority, and the City of Longmont, like this spoke, should be encouraged and expanded. Other new development projects could be helped by simplifying the planning process wherever possible and working with developers to provide more low cost units encouraging them to continue to work with the city. The low cost rental housing stock is an affordable gap situation with the rental mismatch being about 2,000 units. Many seniors find themselves in dire straits financially and believe they are facing homelessness. Resource specialists at the Senior Center and our center can help seniors with emergency housing recommendations or assistance through the housing stabilization program. It is difficult to reach vulnerable seniors who do not mix in the community and know or know where to get help. So the city could use their utility billing services to let their customers know how to get help before it's too late. Since HUD money can only be used for infrastructure projects, services such as Safe Lot, which prevent people tipping into being homeless on the street, need to be funded wherever possible by the city, county, and private organizations. That's gonna be another recommendation. 
Safe Lots was a program, if anybody doesn't know, where people would be, um, would congregate at a church at night and they would be able to park in the parking lot and use the church's facilities. I was aware of it because I don't, I help at Round Pantry and they use Westview Presbyterian Church at night. They did. And they could park there. They had facilities. They could take showers. They could get something to eat. Um, they really were given an opportunity to have a more comfortable um, existence as far as temporarily using the Safe Lots program. However, the Safe Lots program did not get funded. So it ended. So we want to encourage um, the city to provide funds that would bring Safe, Light, safe Lots back. Does anybody have any questions at all? I know yeah, that's a many, ton of information. How many actual recommendations do you have? Um, we have the, well, it's hard with the homeless situation and the transitional housing because everything's being recommended. You know, people are recommending affordable housing. They're recommending transitional housing. So it's kind of hard. The city's already doing all that. I feel yeah. like we kind of thought. Um, what we're going to do is recommend that the, um, I think he, the city ordinance, the tax, the, what's the, the property tax about? exemption? Exclusionary zoning. Zoning, thank you. Oh, zoning, okay. The zoning get changed so that they can do ADUs, duplexes and higher density in existing neighborhoods so okay. they can turn buildings into. Uh, um, I think we need to uh, focus on probably two or three as far as. Okay, that would be one of them. That would be one, okay. Um, the homestead property tax exemption. Okay. We want to push that, but that's really state level. I don't know that that's city council. Well, I, I got some yeah. things to say about that. But okay, but idea. that is coming up and uh, through the, um, and I put, I think I put it in my report from the Boulder County Area on Aging. They are tracking that, and they are looking into the two things that are coming up, which is the um, funding of the so, home, of the older oh, Americans so services aging. Act. Yes, the right. uh, older Americans um, Act and the Homestead Act. So they're going to be going through. I asked Lindsay about the letter that we're, we want to send out about mm -hmm. the Homestead yeah. Act. Yeah. And she said, new legislation is coming out of the governor's office in the next couple of weeks. So we should probably hold off until we see what they're doing. I think I can, res I can respond to some of that, I think. Okay. Well, as soon as we know what they're, they're doing to make up for that, um, the fact that it didn't make it into the, a special session, yeah. um, then we'll find out what's going on and then we'll we'll put together a letter that we can send out. But we have to do it because it's like March yeah. that they do the consider the um, the consideration and they give out the the funding. Right. So we have to yeah, we, need we to, have like mid March. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of something even a little sooner. No 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 I'm saying that's our deadline. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Our deadline is mid March. Yeah. So we what I'd like to recommend is if we, when we get the letter together, I want to send it to everybody and we'll do it through Ronnie, but send it to any seniors you know. Tell them to go ahead and sign it and send it in. Let's like paper the office, which is much, with as much letters as we possibly can on both situations and see what we can do about getting people more involved in it and, and uh, expressing what they want to have done. Can Does senior, that make sense? Oh, excuse me. Can the senior center put something here for people to see about what you're talking about? Uh, and a, and a right. letter to pick up and sign from here? It says, I don't know why, I don't know why not. I mean, we should be yeah. something up for the various um, ballot issues that was posted up here. It was really educational. But if you're getting seven or 8,000 people through here a month, is there some way to put something up that says, sign this letter, just put your name on it? I have to double check on that. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's Okay, if you could look into that and yeah. find out. Yeah, 7,000 people a month. Okay, so it's going to be the Homestead Act, it's going to be the zoning. There's one more hand. Safe lots. The Senate Bill. Safe lots. The safe lots. Senate Bill 24040. Oh, right, and that's the, that's the um, old age 
Right. The, right. Older yeah. Americans yeah. Act. Oh, yeah. The Older Americans Act. Yes, that's the one that's going through the um, state legislature, and that's right. the one that the Agency on Aging is tracking to. Yeah, can I? Um, this is kind of awkward. I've done some work on that. I called Sandy uh, Cedar. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I got some suggestions. Okay. And uh, I, I was I was looking at all the legislation that had been done. Most of this was done before you did your work. I should say most of it was, I think, after you did your work. So I talked to uh, Sandra yesterday, and she told me about a couple of bills. One, actually, one bill. Uh, I hope I can remember this stuff. But she, uh, I happened to be in an HOA meeting last night, and she called, and I was talking on the street, and I didn't have my stuff with me, so I'm not sure I got it all. But she, she sent me. I, I asked her if it would be okay if we could send letters regarding certain legislation to our representative and to our senator. It's on the same line, same thing that you're talking about, exactly. And so if you don't mind, if you bear with me, I'll read the, and she sent me back an email on okay. what the conversation was. And uh, this is this is it, so it's not very long. Okay. Um, hello, David, thanks for reaching out to me. I am so glad we had the right, the chance to chat tonight. Here are the three bills we talked about today. At this point, the city council has not taken any official position on any of these, so technically the city has no position. Just to share with Ronnie and Jeff, did you get that today already? Ah, you should, probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the city council, as a body, takes official positions on legislative bills. The city position is always the city council voted on position. Okay, I think we did. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to verify. The senior advisory, the senior citizen advisory board can take positions on legislative bills that send information to legislature. It does not need to be the chair that sends those out. However, it needs to be identified that the board is taking the position, not the city or the city council, unless the council has, been has taken that position specifically. Since it is a board position and not a city position, Staff may not send out that information. You are welcome to send your positions to the city council to ask them to take a similar position. However, there may be times that the council takes a different position, of course, and theirs is the official city position. So that's, that's from Sandy. Now, <clears throat> I'm just thinking what she suggested further is that, uh, wait, this is the part I'm trying to remember. She said, that you can take, uh, I got three bills here. We talked about them. Could you tell us the bills before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I would have sent these. I would have sent these out earlier, but I, you know, I didn't know what they were, and this is uh, one of these was just filed yesterday. Okay. I'm just going to write something up on the board for oh. everybody. You go oh. right ahead. Okay. All right. The first bill is. Uh, this is uh, House, what's it called? House Concurrent Resolution 24101. And I'll just read it to you. The summary, it's quite, it's not real lengthy, it's only a few pages, but I think the basic point you can get across in a separate, in a, in a, in a separate letter. Submitting House Con, the House Concurrent Resolution submitting to the registered electors of the state of Colorado an amendment to the Constitution, Colorado Constitution, concerning the expansion of eligibility for the senior property tax exemption and in connect, connection therewith, allowing a senator who received the exemption for 2016 or any later year for a prior owner-occupied primary residence to claim the exemption for the senior's current owner occupied primary residence regardless of how long the senior has owned or occupied that residence. So what's the number of uh, HCR 101 24 101. So basically so, that's the Homestead Act. 
This is regarding the Homestead Act. Right. Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch where it said that it was to follow the owner if they moved. Did, did I miss that part? Yeah, I think it, that's what it is. It is. It, it says uh, allowing a senior to claim the exemption for the senior's current occupied, regardless of how long they've been there. Takes more than 10 years. So they could move, yeah. but so, they don't have yeah. the, that. So it's not the 10 year requirement so, is not part of this. Right. Right. So, and say, say that tenure. number again because it doesn't sound like. That's a, it's a, it's not a, it's not a current bill. It's, it's something that was done, I think. Well, you know, I don't know when that was done exactly. SB 24101? That's uh, HCR 24 101. Oh. HCR 24 1001. Yeah, did I say 101? You said 101. I'm sorry, 1001. And so, okay, and here's, <clears throat> okay, and here's, so that's, personally, I think that's something we should support. I mean, yes. it's a continuing resolution uh, to fill in, to, you know, to, to make people eligible for that exemption. Okay, so I'm going on. The second one is uh, House Bill 24, 24 dash, 1166. Now that's the one I just found out about last night. The idea is, has been around, but Sandy said it had just been filed yesterday. So, uh, this, this gets a little, I had to read this several times. <coughs> so it says, okay, the, the title of it is, A Bill for an Act Concerning the Expansion of Property Tax tax exemptions for certain owner-occupied primary residences. Now, this reinstates the, the property tax exemptions for certain owner-occupied. Now, for this, I'll just read it to you. For the property tax years commencing during the property tax reassessment cycle that began on or after January 1, 2025, the bill changes the amount of the exemptions for the owner-occupied primary residence of a qualifying senior, a veteran with a disability, or the surviving spouse of a veteran, or who died in the line of duty, a veteran who died in the line of duty, whose death resulted in service-related injury or disease. Okay, here's the tricky part. From 50% of the first 200,000 of the actual value of the residence to 50% of the actual amount of the residence equal to the estimated state median value. And I worked that out and that's an increase because the, the, the increase, the median increase would be something like maybe approaching 600,000, which would be 300,000, 50% of 300,000 rather than 50% of 200,000. Okay, you with me so far? Yeah. Are you smarter than I was? <laughs> All right. So, um, and then if the median value for the, uh, accept them, accept them, if the median value declines, the exemption amount continues to be calculated based on the median home value based to calculate the exemption amount for the property tax years included in the cycle, in other words, grandfather, on the amount that was in there before. That's the way I would do it. Okay. Um, if I could interrupt for a second, this is the website where you can look it up and you can not only, you can see um, everything about the bill. So you, you get an executive summary, you get the full text of the bill, you get where it is in the legislative process, and you get to see who the sponsors are. So uh, this would be um, all the information that you would, you yeah. would need, and you can right. search by these numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and then I think, David, some people can read the executive summaries for themselves. We don't need to go into, into the you know, alternatives yeah. so much, and we can get to the end of the meeting. But well, I, I, and you've I wanna, got I, another one, right? Yeah, I got one more, and I want to finish this up because I got a suggestion. Um, 
and allows a senior who has owned or occupied the senior's residence for 10 years or the surviving spouse. Okay, that's the part uh, that's been reinstated. I'm trying to hurry this along. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So it, it, it really gets to the property exemption. Then it says the exemption of the seniors senior spouse current residence, regardless of how long the senior or surviving spouse has owned or occupied that residence, the bill makes the statutory changes to conform to the constitutional amendment. So if there's, if that constitutional amendment passes next fall, this will be incorporated according to the, the amendment to the constitution. Okay, then the last one I got to talk, to talk about <clears throat> And I don't, this could be, this is pretty simple, straightforward, and that's the uh, Senate Bill 24-040. Senate Bill 24-040. And that's the one that provides for an annual adjustment to the state funding of social service or the AG. Division and the distribution of the money. If I got that right, okay, and that's the one that you sent out. That, that that's part of your report, saying that we should probably support that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, um, right. And I did want to say I wanted to correct it. Appropriations is in March, so they yeah. will be deciding how much money yeah. um, will be appropriated for the for the bill. However, what what we found out was. It would mean Boulder County would only get like two hundred and fifty thousand. Well, but still, if they went for five million, which is what they're going for, yeah, um, their Boulder County would get, and I don't mean only, but I mean that gives us some perspective on what we're going for. Yeah, yeah, and you need to realize that there are sixteen different right area yeah. agencies within the state, so that that money, that five million dollars, needs to be spread over the sixteen. Exactly. Different so places. this is specifically for the area agency. Yes, area agency. Area agency. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. To fund the AACs. Right. Right. Yeah. To continue and then to and then to give them the ability to do an increase with forward from the inflation as it continues through the years, every three years, and they look at it again for an increase in inflation. Right, and it is every three years, and they don't right now. Um, have an increase on population. So if the population gets bigger, that doesn't generate an increase in the funding. They don't, they don't, you know, benefit from um, additional funding. And the senior population is expected to be the leading demographic change exactly. between now and 2050. Yeah. <clears throat> well, here's, okay, now here's my punching line. Um, if you don't like it, fine, just say so. Yeah, if you don't like it, say so. <laughs> Sheila wrote a letter, and it's a good letter, and, it, and it's right on target. However, that letter, this is what I'm saying, that letter was written before this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hitchhiking and to what Sandy suggested last night, she said, or did I say, and she agreed. No, no, she, actually, she said, she suggested it. She said, Go ahead and send it to your representative. Do the senators also? Do sure. There's yeah. two yeah, representatives that we'd be sending it to. Yeah, so there'd be Lewis. Here, McCormick and. Yeah, McCormick and Lewis, she's the senator. Okay, so we'd set, we'd, uh, Sheila could send that letter. But I would suggest that we add those, four, those three bills to the letter and sign it to the board unanimously supports these bills and that we send a copy to the representatives, CCs to the city, uh, the mayor, city council, and anybody else that would want to. And she said that way, her thought was maybe you can get something going on. Mm -hmm. What does uh, Sheila's letter say now? It really talks about the homestead. Just really talks about the homestead. Yeah. Right? Redo that letter. The, the letter would have to be redone a little bit. Yeah, we would have to redo it. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I'm thinking, yeah, 
it, it's a good letter. It's just, like I say, it doesn't incorporate some, incorporate some of the new stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, and there's actually two, and I want to clarify that too. One says, I as a board member of right. the advisory board. <clears throat> Um, the other says from a private citizen, mm -hmm. yeah. and it doesn't include anything about the advisory board. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and so the the board needs to vote. Well, actually, yeah, before she can say, before it can say, yeah. as a we need to vote. Board. We need to vote today. Mm -hmm. Okay, is, is what I'm thinking. You know, and if everybody's okay with it, then Sheila can go ahead and make the make the uh, adjustments and just sign it. Okay. So, so we would literally, we wouldn't have to put in any other information, no details about the bills we're supporting. We just, we are supporting this, this, and this. We uh, ask that you support I, I, that. Uh, you don't think Keep so? short? I think, I think, yeah, I think just real short and sweet. Here's they know what they're doing. Like you know, they know the bills yeah. we're referring yeah. to. Yeah. As long as it lists the number and what it's called, I think right. that's all we need to put in there. Well, yeah, okay. Marcia, is that you agree? Yeah, I agree. It should we it should probably be shorter than that. They don't need to be, you know, you need to state your topic so that they know that you know what you're talking about. But otherwise, those numbers, um, and you and you need to say the advisory board of the city of Longmont mm -hmm. for for seniors uh, has voted to uh, urge you to support these bills. Right. And that's almost yeah. all it needs to say. And that's yeah. Perfect. And then just list right. the numbers and that's it. That's yeah. right. Because yeah. even if it's a whole page, you have no idea how pressed for time they are. Right. And they don't yeah. have time yeah. to read anything. Yeah. And then we can do one for just John Q. Public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, say, my name's so and so. I'm a senior citizen in, in Longmont, and I want you to know that I support these bills. Okay. And I think, we ask everybody that you does everybody understand what we're talking about? I'm here? asking yeah. you to support this bill. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We're asking that you support I'm these bills. Requesting it. Yes. Very good. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. This is not the usual thing, I don't think, but if we can influence them, let's, let's try to do it. Yeah. You know? yeah. I've done this before and it can be pretty. Okay. How lengthy <laughs> this letter be, do you think? How what? Lengthy. Like, One page? Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah two paragraphs. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we were recommending it should be shorter than Very that. Short. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She has well, well, my question is, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not, I'm bilingual, but as far as writing something in Spanish, I, I don't know how to do it. Does, board, does the senior center have any translators here? Um, we utilize our staff. We have uh, Bianca can help translate. We have um, Melissa and Veronica okay. can help translate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure is that okay for them to do? Yeah. I have to double check. Can, okay, I have to good. double check with everything yeah. to make sure that's something that we're... That's a good question. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And if question. not, then I can reach out to somebody I know who can translate it for us. Okay. Okay. And Maria says that yeah. she's willing to help with that. Oh, okay, also. good. Oh, that probably be best. Mm -hmm. so just keep it with Maybe yeah. keep it within the board. You're absolutely right. right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, no, it's all right. And then that way we can get that and we can reach out some of the Spanish speakers that we know of too. I don't sure. make a motion, but I'll tell you what I think we need in the motion. We need a motion that says that, that uh, I guess, delegate is the word, trust, I don't know, that we direct Sheila to redraft the letter and include reference to the three bills that we have talking about and that we have unanimous consent of the board and you know however she wants to phrase that but uh the, the, yeah okay i don't think that's it i think okay. what we need to vote on is that the board supports these bills yes oh, okay that's all we need to vote on and what we do about it we don't need to vote we don't need to, you know, we can talk about it, we can agree to it, but we don't need to go on record as voting that we're going to have Sheila redraft the letter. That doesn't have to be voted on at all. Well, what we okay, do but... want to vote on is the fact that the, we want to vote that the advisory board, the Senior Citizens Advisory Board of Longmont, supports these bills. Okay. Okay. And however the so best way to work so... that. And we can't say unanimous unless it is. Right. Yeah, well, we'll have to find out when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is that the way we word it? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I okay. make a motion that the Senior Citizens Advisory Board of Longmont support HCR 24 101, HB 24 1166, 
and SB 24040. Okay. And along with that, that we send uh, CC to again the, the mayor or say, and the city council. Is that what we said on that? Or See, no? we don't even have to vote on it. Don't even have do to do about that. it. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, we, then we, then we can discuss what okay. to do about it. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this motion is specifically saying our unanimous hopefully support of these three bills. Okay, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, any, just, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Did we get a second? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm sorry, was there a second? Yes, second. Okay, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's, let's do it this way. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, I guess that makes it unanimous. Um, are those, is, is anybody in favor? Of, one absent. Against one or? Absent. Or, or one absent. Okay, motion carries. Okay, perfect. Okay, do you have everything you need then? You I can make... go ahead and draft the new letter. Okay. It's not going to be that hard. It's going to okay. be very and short. And I'm saying just, okay, and I'm saying, you're saying that you just go ahead and do it. Yeah, I'll do it tonight and I'll get it out to everybody you know. Well, yeah, get it to yes, May I also suggest that you copy Sandy Cedar and ask her um, to ask for council's approval if it's not too late. You know, the, the order in which the bills are heard, um, it, it goes real fast. So time is of the essence yes. in getting this, these letters off. We, you know, we should email and try to get them out by Friday yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then it could go before the council next week I think and, and uh, uh, if 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 it's in time you know so but so um, you lost me what's it going to council for oh well the council also approves or uh, re does the thing that we just did okay. at the city council level and if the city council does that if they approve yeah then okay. it, then any letter that's written by anybody can say you know I'm a private citizen but I want to tell you that the Longmont City Council has approved has recommended that that you approve this bill okay who takes who takes care of that then well S Sandy Cedar brings decides what bills to bring before council and um, I'll, I'll get in touch with her then. So, I'll yeah, just so provide just, her. Yeah. She'll okay. tell me whatever this. information she needs. Okay. And we'll take it from yeah. there. Well, okay. all she needs is those numbers. Okay. You'll, she'll take it, you'll take it from there. And I suggest we start getting letters out before we find out whether it's been approved or not by the city council. Well, we know that, uh, and I'll, when it's my turn to talk, actually, officially, um, I'll tell you what the council has done, but I can tell you that the council has not been asked to opine on any of these yet. Okay, so I don't want to wait for them to no, do that. No, you don't. I no. want to send Board's them. Done we, it. Can, we can recommend anything they want. Right. right. But I'm pretty sure. But we can add on to any letters in the future if they yes, do approve exactly. it. We can exactly. Say, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, they can do that. Yeah, I, if this has the potential of having some impact, or maybe not. But at least we need to try. Yeah. So. I think numbers always matter. Yeah. The legislatures. Yeah, you know, they're legislators. Okay. Anything they need further to know on, what on housing? Doing. If the council um, approves. No. Does anybody have any other information that they think they want to recommend from housing? <coughs> um, rather than do this at the end for council comments, um, it probably makes more sense for me to talk about this now. Good. Um, uh, the main subject of last night's study session was housing and um, the council voted um, there there were recommendations that, that you can find online um, but the, the council recommended uh, increases in density increases in, in uh, the amount of affordable units that could be Subject to incentive, and a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things that um, made it easier to get developers to build affordable housing, as opposed to having to wait for the LHA to use their fees in lieu. Which, you know, it, the money counts for more if the LHA does it, but the it happens sooner if the builders do it. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a trade-off. Um, but these were all really positive things, and it wasn't. Um, 
it wasn't a good, it, it was not a shoe in that that the council would favor at all because there's getting, uh, there's a lot of opposition to mm. um, building more housing in Longmont by mm -hmm. certain factions. Um, but the most important thing along um, these lines, sorry, yeah, up here, is that um, HB twenty four one one five two is a, a bill that um, uh, expand makes makes the building of accessory dwelling units a use by right in a, in many more zones. Specifically, what it would do for Longmont is that in any single family. Um, any single family zoned neighborhood, if you've got room for it, um, you can build an accessory dwelling unit. And uh, that includes neighborhoods that are governed by HOAs. So what that does oh, is wow. void. Interesting. Yeah, it voids an, any HOA covenant that says you can't build ADUs. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. And Jeez. that's, you know, so that that's is, big. that's strong because it gives uh, uh, elders a place to downsize into, including, you know, children that own a home can build a, a senior home. That's probably the primary reason that they would do it. And, and it also includes an appropriation for um, uh, a la uh, paying the city, the city back if it waives the uh, impact fees for the person that builds the ADU. So, um, you know, that, it, that was really, uh, as far as I'm concerned at least, a big victory, sure. um, and it was, not, it was not unanimous on the council. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, Sandy recommended the opposite, mm -hmm. um, because it, it does slightly limit local control, but a, HOAs limit local control a lot more. Oh, that's for sure, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so the council ultimately decided that uh, removing the HOA presumption <coughs> meant more to Longmont than um, gave people more choices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay. anyway, that's that's an important one too. That one could be included in the letter. You'd have to take another vote. Um, but the city council has already, and, and Sandy will have to will write a letter. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, that was actually one of the bills that I was going to bring up, and I thought maybe. The, the city wouldn't support the whole. The city, the, the staff the, recommended not supporting it, but the council mm -hmm. wrote the whole. Okay, that's good to know. And now, can I ask a quick question? Does that include um, duplexes? No, it's specifically an additional. Uh, it's city. It's specifically accessory dwelling units. Okay. Um, so Does that mean that, attached to the house or detached? Well, Both? this this one. Um, this one specifically is uh, detached because those are the ones that the HOA tends to preclude. They they it's it's hard to it's hard to present prevent you know basement apartments and stuff by by HOA covenants. But right. um, additional so yeah offsetting right. separate units. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if we support this. Uh, there could be some flack to the council, it seems to be, and us if we support it, uh, regarding you know allowing access accessory dwelling units. So I just you know I, I support it, but well, so that's what I'm saying. The council all, the council already voted to support it last mm -hmm. night. Right, and, and I'm saying we <laughs> yeah, whether that we the, against it, <laughs> whether we vote to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does everybody think? I don't think it's great. I would, I would support that. Add it to the letter as a fourth, yeah. fourth mm -hmm. bill of support. 
Yes. Well, and you might additionally mention that the council also, also yeah. supports it. Well, I yeah, I was I was totally wrong on that. I thought I thought the council was uh, opposed <clears throat> because of the. Well, it was four to three, wasn't it? Four to three. It, yeah, it was it was it was four to three or five to two. But anyway, somebody voted against it. Joan, the mayor, voted against it, and uh, I think Diane Chris voted against it. You can look in the in the minutes because yeah, yeah. you know I was I was counting just the number of green X's and whew, passed it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay, so not to be on the other side, I am not for it. Okay, and, and why? Well, because I've been involved in HOAs and and I've seen what can happen if this thing gets out of control, and so again, I it's not something I'm. Are there stipulations I, to the HOAs? Is what? it just blanket they can do it or yeah, it, it voids that specific that specific covenant and doesn't change HOA. It, it it does not change the ability of HOAs to override local code um or to be more restrictive than local code. Um except in that one case. That one case, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there was there there's opposition to that because lots of people like um, having uh, exclusive neighborhoods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I just I just thought to myself, if my next door neighbor did that, would I be real crazy about that? And probably not. No. Yeah. Yeah, Lonnie. No, I'm just oh, stretching Lonnie. my fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that so, last that comment about our neighborhood? I just said if one of my neighbors built an accessory dwelling unit, okay. I don't know if I'd be real crazy about it. Or if there are three or four on, on my block, I'm not sure I'd be real crazy about it. I do understand that's aligned with what you said last time. You said that if we if people did that, we could account it would be about six percent of the vacancies and that would take care of some of the vacancies. Yeah, the vacancies. yeah, a, a very small fraction of the of the single family homes yeah. would uh if, 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 if that fraction did it, yeah. built ADUs, that it, it would uh, essentially solve our immediate short-term housing needs all by itself. So- I um, think, personally, I think that's the greater good. I think that's what you're- Well, you're yeah, that's why I support it, because yeah. it's the greater good. I live in an HOA. Um, yeah. yeah, me too. And, uh, uh, you know, well, HOAs do stuff that is good. Um, Okay. Just... Well, let's let's vote on it then. Any more discussion? Let's vote on it then. So, or I should say, somebody make a motion. Lottie. I make a motion that the Longmont Senior Advisory Board support <clears throat> HB twenty four dash one one five two. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Okay. Two seconds. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, <coughs> raise your hand. If it's okay, except for one vote, I'll vote for it. Okay, not unanimous, but uh, you can't use the word unanimous. That's but, okay, we can on the other ones. Okay. Um, and I will definitely add that the council also supported that final one. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving along. Uh, Anybody have any other questions about housing? Any other ideas that they think the city should be recommend <clears throat> recommendations given to the city? If you do, if there's something that didn't come up today and you think later, oh wait, I wanted to make this recommendation that we give to the council um, or to the to Harold when he's here in March, just let us know. Yeah. Just let me know and, right. and we can work through it. Okay. Uh, Eric? I, I just had a question for Lonnie. How much does the Safe Watch program cost? You know, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I just know that the funding didn't. How much does Safe Watch cost? How much does Safe Watch cost? Mm -hmm. um, Do I you have any. My hand was up for that same reason. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to ask the cost, but um, it's. Uh, I, I want to find out more about why the city didn't fund that. Um, and there was a, the uh, hope was hoping to get a state grant to fund it, and that may be why the city didn't fund it. 
Um, but uh, deciding whether to support this the Safe Lot program and uh, and and uh, you know doing the, the same thing about that, but it's not a state legislature thing. Right. It would be a, a thing to the city. But we make a recommendation. That, that yeah. And and I would like to. Rec I I'd like to advise or liaise <laughs> that that um, maybe you could vote on it um, next month because we're still so soon enough for city appropriations. Sure. By then, and and uh, we can find out more about that either by maybe one of the members can talk to Alice Soltenfus, and I can talk to the people who did funding in the city. Okay. Then what I'd like to recommend is. We're not voting on what we're going to recommend to the city yet, so we don't need to worry about not voting on it. But why don't we table the idea of making safe lots one of the recommendations until next meeting when I can get more information? Okay. Okay. Are you okay with that? Do we need a motion. Arlene. I would just like to throw a couple of things out for us to think about, you know, into the future. And it's <clears throat> adult daycare, which I go on about all the time. But is that part of housing and, a, and assisted living? I think that those are things that are critical for our aging population. So I'm very sorry. Keep it in. Keep it in your thoughts and maybe yeah. five or six years well, we'll get can, somewhere. Okay, uh, one. I'll make some <laughs> clarifications. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you like that. Um, first of all, I've been told by people at LHA or people who know what's going on with city. That assisted living is in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Correct. It is. It is. They're but really thinking about the fact that that's something they have to address. Oh, they are. So we need we're happening here. But yes, you're right. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to let them know. Yep, we're pushing you. You know, we support it too. So we can definitely make that recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I want to reread my my um, report from the. Um, from the uh, housing because there was another recommendation in there, but we will have it all ready for March meeting. Exactly what recommendations we're gonna make. To the city. The one, exactly, yeah. exactly. Excellent. So one thing I do have a question about is, does senior daycare fall under housing? Hmm. Or is that human service, is that? Well, I don't, I thought we were services. senior services and not specifically housing. So for senior services for the entire city, then I think adult day care falls under that. Yeah, okay. Okay. But I thought you were adding, adding it. Yeah. 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 I yeah. thought you were adding it to the housing recommendation. No, I think it's it's something that it's something that we need to continue to push in my in my opinion. Sure. Because the senior population is not that. getting any younger. We yeah. can definitely so do we that. Need to, yeah. yeah, we won't forget it. We'll, we'll <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's let's move on to transportation. Arlene? Well, and I know that I, I included this for all of you, and I did come up with three recommendations based on this. Um, so my three recommendations are that we continue to advocate for the microtransit service, and our advocate advocacy needs to be that it be a um, reasonable amount. Right now, VIA charges $6 for a one-way trip, and you also have to call a week ahead of time. Microtransit, you can call within 15 to 30 minutes, you can get a ride. I don't know what it's going to be. I know it's probably not going to be free, but um, it should be a really reduced rate, and that would be for seniors or anybody else that needs it. Um, the other uh, second thing I'm, I'm thinking about is the Firestone Longmont Mobility Hub, which is at 25th and or I-25 and C-119. I think that we need to advocate for RTD or local bus service or something to be able to get us from Longa to that hub so that we can access that service that takes cars off the road, that gets people going and it needs, again, it needs to be a reasonable amount, but I, I think if we just advocate for that service so that we can get there. Um, and then the third thing out of all of my lists here is um, the street crosswalk lights. I watched again yes. by that 6th and um, Main the other day. And yes, that walk light goes on before, but I don't think it's long enough. So I think if we've got, if people can start across on a walk light before we allow traffic to start going, 
they're safer. And one of the things that came up at this transportation meeting the other night was pedestrian and bicycle accidents that are happening and they had a whole data on it. And it is, and it's not exactly at six, but it's from 9th to about uh, 21st, that the majority of those accidents happen and I can understand that. People think that once you hit nine, it's a road, it gets a racetrack from there. So I think we need to take a look at letting people start crossing before I'm driving or I'm turning or, you know, whatever. I've Those noticed, are my three. Discussion. <clears throat> I've noticed that it used to be that the lights started um, counting right away, and now the white man white stays on. white for a little while, and then it starts counting. Yeah, and that white man needs to stay white longer. Right, Maybe and unfortunately, halfway across. What I thought about it when I looked at it, I was like, dang, they did change, and unfortunately, they didn't change it for long enough. So we probably have to go through another change to get it to be longer. Don't you think? Uh, yeah, a piece of information on mm -hmm. software. What? I know it's software. Yeah. It's, it yeah. is software, but yeah. the thing is that they have already purchased the new software, but uh, the uh, light, the device itself, has to, have, has to be smarter. It has to be, the, the physical device has to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. And so they are upgrading them one at a time. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, we need to, um, I need to recommend that, that they put up a, ma a map or something of which ones have been upgraded and which ones haven't. Right. I need mean, to know that. Yeah, because you don't know whether the new ones just aren't long enough or whether you're looking at an old one. Mm -hmm. And that matters. When you, when you complain, mm -hmm. it matters. So anyway, that's what you know. They, they are aware of the problem. They have purchased a fix, but it has to be installed one by one. And another recommendation that people have made is that if people are having a hard time crossing there, then to go down to the mid um, block where the new lights are, because those are longer, and, and, and they good. can cross over there. Now it all depends upon who's walking and, and can they make it down to mid block. Right. You know, it's just a comfort thing, but um, these are all temporary things anyway until the things get done, but I would love to know which they upgraded because when I saw they had changed the one in front of the building, I was like, bonus, but it's still not long enough. It's not long enough. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, the people who work, who are the, the field people in the city are young and active, right? <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, are. No, they think it's, right. you know, right. they think it's plenty of time. But the other thing is to say to them, okay, if your wife or even you are out there and you have a kid in a stroller or you have, you're walking across with little kids, they're not walking at the same pace you are. You need to be able to safely get across. Yeah, and even yeah. animals, you know, if you're walking your dog on the main on the Yeah, streets, they'll stop and just the need streets. to be yeah. open to, you know. Walking. Those are my three uh, recommendations. Good ones. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Both of you have done excellent work. Um, all right, do we just want to uh, just carry those forward as is? <coughs> Somebody make a motion. Then. I make a motion that we <coughs> carry the recommendations mentioned beforehand to the city council. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a little. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know okay. that we need yeah. to vote on it yet because mm -hmm. we're going to have more recommendations <coughs> next month. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we might as well wait until we really well, know what's going I, on. I, I, I wanted to be in a position when we have Harold here next month that said everybody you know, approves of this or they don't. Okay, well in that case we can do it. So puts me in a bad spot when we have to do support you. Yeah. Well, you know, David, you can can make the motion. Yeah, I can. I know, I know that, but I like to have other people. But I will. Uh, I make a motion that we uh, adopt our our lane's <coughs> recommendations and that they be moved forward uh, as part of our recommendations to Harold next month and to the city council. Okay. Second. 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 Any further discussion? And we're going to wait on ours, the housing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 
And I do want to make one thing. I think it's a good idea for these reports to be sent beforehand, mm -hmm. yes. that people get them beforehand so they can read them. Yeah. Um, we, it's been a question whether we do bullet points at the yeah. meeting or yeah. whether we actually put out a report beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. How do people each feel about it? Well, actually, we had decided that uh, six months ago or a year ago, that's what we were going to do. Send them out ahead of time, you know, so people had time to digest them. It was. Oh, I thought we were, okay. Yeah. All right, good. So. That's what I think is the best way to do it. I do, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I just remind everybody to get their reports in faster, because yeah, it, yeah, really. All right, do we still need to vote on a motion? Yes, nope. Either. Okay. Everybody in favor? Did we get a yeah, second? Yeah, we have a, there was a motion in the second. Yeah. So we have to okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, let's go on to outreach. Um, <clears throat> Art, do you have anything to add on that? No, not really. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. that uh, we're looking at a way of, of mm -hmm. uh, tracking, uh, tracking uh, what did you say? Uh, uh, getting the information on the participants here. And uh, <clears throat> and then the other thing that, uh, you know, we've talked about is that, uh, and, and I don't know that's ever been said that we will do it, is that uh, the outreach, uh, what do you call the outreach specialist or what do you call them? Person here, senior center. Yeah. <clears throat> what is our specialist? The, the, yeah, the people resource. are taking uh, resource specialists. Resource specialists. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of it. Uh, that that they're continuing to tell others about participate in in programs here at the center too. Uh, I think that's that's very important. And uh, of course, talk to Maria a little bit, and she she does attend a lot of activities here. Yeah. And that she, you know, is going to be part of that to help and, and looking at uh, expanding the programs here at the center. Excellent. And with that, with that support, um, again, evaluating our systems and processes. Right, we we're talking about collecting data from a lot of our our um, drop-in groups, mm -hmm. and it starts with um, being able to track attendance. And we talked about the importance of tracking attendance uh, in an earlier conversation. So. We'll need that additional support, understanding the importance of now going through the registration process to to register in our systems <clears throat> for these drop-in programs, so we can keep and collect that data. Right. Um, and so there's some confusion around there. Um, we're not changing anything. We're not trying to make things complicated for anybody. It's just we need this information to have the data we need to support our programs and decision making. Right, uh, the effectiveness of programs. Um, 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 track attendance numbers for specific groups, um, things like that. And there is a big increase on participants. There has been. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. So. Okay. <clears throat> I, I've got, uh, I can go through my stuff pretty quickly. We've talked about it before. But this is mainly for the new people, because uh, you've only heard me probably talk about it two, three times yet. So. Um, We've talked a lot about, I see, I consider uh, expanding weekend hours and after hours as part of outreach. And I do think that should be a recommendation uh, eventually to, uh, to Harold and to the City Council. I know there's a cost, and I don't know what the cost is. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is approved on that. So we're in the process of working oh. on that as we speak. Oh, excellent. Well, um, um, additional expanding funding hours. hours for staffing to expand hours. Oh, so okay. during the day or on the weekend or both? Both. Um, right now we're looking at five to seven. Uh, spending five to seven Monday through Thursday, and then um, the weekend I think we're looking at eight to twelve. Okay. So um, okay. funding was approved for the excellent. last budget request. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it does help to keep me on on them. <laughs> so, um, That's great. again, just being innovative, forward thinking, how can we continue to improve what we're doing, provide mm -hmm. more opportunities, more more availability um, to access our, our not just our programs, but our resources as well. So, uh, just had some conversations this morning with actually with our leadership team to kind of start start getting in that mindset of what it's going to look like for both sides, from our recreation programming team 
to um, expect again continuing to prep or being able to program in the evenings um, days times what programs are we looking for and as and, and as for our um, support services side you know what does it uh, what can it look like for our staff to be more to now be available after 5 p.m. because right now our schedules are 8 to 5 right so are we looking at flexing time and if we are moving some of our staff to that later evening does that mean they're coming in later or are we looking at doing a longer day so kind of like a, almost like a four uh, four, four days four, four tens. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. so we're I started that conversation this morning with our leadership team. They're going to go back to uh, their teams, have um, smaller conversations. Uh, they're equipped with the information they need to answer some of those questions, and then coming back um, to the leadership group to kind of say, okay, well, this is what we're thinking. And we're starting these discussions now because uh, we would probably be looking at, um, at the top of my head, thinking maybe a, a June rollout to allow us to get those logistics in place, and not, all, not only that, but higher hire for that position for the um, we'll, we'll need a building supervisor here um, for those expanded hours because our front desk staff is again also eight to five so we'll uh, have to hire for that position um, and then program right that's and, an position, right? yeah yeah and, and then on top of that um, communicate out to our community that right. have plenty yeah. of time to say hey coming in June this, this is what we're up to later on. yeah later and longer so so we're, we're, we're starting that process now so oh, that's excellent. To hear. No, no, no. I'm, I'm happy to hear. That's great news. Yeah. Great news. My question is going to be: Are we going to need an additional resource specialist? And if we are, we need to start looking ahead to budget that position. I love it. Great question. <laughs> and so, looking big picture, right? So now that we're uh, increasing our hours and increasing more availability, now we're looking at the details, right? Right now, the current staff, we are looking at still a four to five uh, wait period. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what can we do to reduce that? And I, and, I, and I put some numbers in my report if you had a chance to look at it, and I'll unpack those here in a bit. Um, but my, oh, I guess to answer your question is there is definitely a need, a growing need for additional resource support. Mm -hmm. And um, I am going to, um, uh, prepare a proposal, not a proposal, but I again kind of not, not identifying the need versus the wants uh, for my budget request this year that I'm going to ask for at least two. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hope for, I'm going to request two resource specialists and that would knock our weight down from four weeks to at least one week. Great. Um, wow. And allow us to be available for those emergent, not, not uh, those, um, um, on the spot, um, um, uh, appointments that can yeah. come in, right? Yeah. That we can accommodate right now because of our four to five week wait. So it has us be more available for those things. It also knocks that wait list down to a week. So we were actually kind of breaking down some of the data this morning again with our leadership team to, to see, to, to help help paint that picture. What, what, what information do I need to help support that conversation? And that request. What do you need from the board to back that up? Because I definitely think you need resource specialists. Um, that same support. So once I get this information, I will definitely get it in everybody's hands, and um, that continue those recommendations of again. You know, I'm I'm not just saying, oh, hey, we would love to have more people, mm -hmm. right? We uh, gotta cut that wage chunk down. Right, and that's really what it comes down to is is, is availability and and uh, and at what capacity, right? Again, we can't take any of those on-the-spot appointments that we would love to. We just, we're, we're not even at capacity, we're beyond mm -hmm. capacity. And I'll, again, I'll share some of those numbers here in a bit. Uh, but what, what support do I need from the board is to um, help, to, to, to help um, uh, um, with those recommendations. Well, I would suggest okay. that you make a motion um, saying that we support the acquisition of two additional resource specialists? That's going to be my request. That? Do we want to do that now or do we want to wait until we get more information from you? That's, that's up to the board. Yeah, well, I guess we can. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we'll right. wait till your report. Because it would go into the 25 budget. Yeah. Yeah. request for the 25 budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is, yeah. All right. Is, is that just to say that if you expand the hours, that four to five week waiting now starts to go up if you don't have resource? It could. And it, it, it could, yes. Um, that wait list could go up because now we're more available, right? Yeah, and now um, if you're open more hours, right. yeah. without more staff, and you're already four to five weeks, right? And you're yeah, pushing that number up. We're, we're only equipped to still um, 
meet the same amount of appointments with the same staff members, which is, current staff members, which is on average, I think three, three a day, uh, 15 a week, um, 60 a month. Okay. That's, right? that's, that's demanding. Yeah. It really is. Right? I've done that kind of stuff. And I, it's, it's hard work. Right. You know? and so that's my goal to continue to be proactive, right? Looking forward, yeah. thanking them. I don't want to wait till we're, and of course we're in the moment now, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, not asking for one now and realizing the rate our community is growing like, um, in, in 12 more months. I like, go, oh, we needed actually an additional person. So right. I'm going to ask big and hope for two. But again, not just yeah. uh, for that reason. It, it's yeah. a, it cuts right. it way down. Wait list down to a week and we provide and the longer hours you're going right. to need at least right. one so you know yeah. go for two yeah exactly. I, I think too it's safe to ask for it mm -hmm. I, 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 you, you, oh, clarification did you say you're hoping to expand those hours by June yes and yes. how would you do it with the staff that you have so I get to hire um, additional staff members um, so I'll, I'll look at that title specifically would be one of two or possibly both um, um, a, a just front desk support customer service and then a building supervisor. So for sure moving forward the building supervisor because there's more responsibility with that. We'll have to not only be that front customer service support but be able to help if they need to set up different rooms. Um, for If we have one program at five o'clock another one starting at six being able to help switch those over. So yeah. Okay. Good things coming. A lot of good things. Yeah. yeah. You know I just you know, there's been a lot of changes since you came on board. Honestly, and you're just good moving good moving right along, taking care yeah. of things. I'm very yeah. impressed. Thank you. And I'm sorry, Lana, you had a question? Well, do you what do you think you want to do? Do you want to have this voted on by the time we're talking to Harold, or do you want us to vote it on next week? Yeah. And next month today or, or later? Um, I, I guess what is the board's recommendation for that? Um, be, you know, it sounds like they were in full support. Do we want that? To be able to go into that conversation, to go to go into that uh, that, that board meeting with Harold. To, yeah, I would like to have it voted on today. Yeah. I'd suggest why don't why don't we deal with that when you make your report? If we want to make a motion, and I've got this, I can be done pretty quickly. I think and we'll go right back to you. Yeah. Because yeah. You, can, you manage your report. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the. Uh, the other thing that we've been talking about off and on, and it goes along with uh, the data collection that you're talking about. I think what we need, I, and I, I feel, I think it's really important that we have some kind of a, a data model that, uh, I don't have a specific data model in mind, but we need to collect information on the population that we're serving and who we aren't serving. So what I'm suggesting is that I would like to see, and again, I've mentioned this before, but I would like to see your staff and the city marketing staff and whoever else might be relevant develop a survey of the community of a, a, a good cross-section, a good profile of the community, uh, and then sample those folks, you know, roughly proportional to what the sample would be roughly proportional to the kinds of the, the population that we have. And that you devise a survey to tap into different areas. Now that, that survey can be arranged in different ways. Someone last time suggested that you could cover the areas the domain, I think it was you, uh, John. We could, we could uh, organize the survey in and the domain that the Boulder County Area Aging Agency did in their survey a few years ago. Survey. I think there's six or seven or eight of those. Mm -hmm. You could develop questions in each of those areas to sample in the survey, uh, you know, are people receiving the kinds of services, not programs, not rec pro programs, but basic services like legal, financial, counseling, suicide, whatever, all of those kind of basic human needs. And just leave the program part of it, the recreation program part of it, out of it. And that, I, I don't know how you how you want to structure it exactly, but you probably it seems to me that probably quarterly goals. Once you establish what the needs are out there, you could call it a need survey. Also, once you establish what the needs are out there on the basis of that survey, 
on your staff that would come up with plans as to how you're going to address those needs. And I and again, I don't know exactly what they are and how you how you would devise it, but it's just a structure that you do by area, by quarter. And then at the end of the year, or each quarter as you go along, you'd evaluate how you're doing. And you do that at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, you repeat. You basically do, you don't necessarily have to do a survey again, but you, you go through that planning process again. So Park, when you ask a question, how many people were referred because of major depression or suicidal areas, you got an answer. Does it vary by demographic area? Right. And I think the demographic areas are the obvious one. I know this can be kind of a sensitive area that you're working on, I know. Age, sex, um, income level, and ethnicity. So what you are saying is, let me see if I got this. Okay. You want to take this information that's coming from a survey and then the goals are going to be set on the basis of the needs that you just and with, Yeah, with reporting back on a quarterly basis and at the end of the year, review those goals and adjust them if it needs to be made for the next year, correct? Yep, yeah, yeah. you got it. Okay, how would the survey go out? Go out? I guess that would be up to the marketing division. I think last time when they did the, uh, didn't they use, they used everything, didn't they? Yeah, they used, yeah, email, they they used, used social media, they used, they used mail, yeah. they used yeah. email, they did a big yeah, part of they it. They did not get any, in. they got very minimal, I should say, responses by email, or by, by mail. By mail. Mail. Uh, uh, majority of the responses were in person that are here at the Senior Center that our uh, advisory board um, conducted those surveys in person and um, by email. You know, so it's, you know, surveys are tough, you know, getting yeah. people to respond. Yeah. I know that. But it's better than not having any information. When I say very minimal by mail, I think it was like five. By <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. snail mail. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of money uh, to go out and there'll be five responses. So right. yeah. Yeah. That's not good. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the basic idea. And uh, we're running out of time here. I would just like to. Uh, do you go along with this? Do you support this, what I just described? I think it's something we should continue to talk about and look into. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay. We definitely need to, we need to vote on anything, but I think it's a good thing to right do. Okay. So you want to defer this to, for a further discussion? Sure. Yes. Okay, can we bring it up with Harold next time? So if I heard the resource person this morning correctly, she said that you guys are going to start tracking your attendance and things like that beginning this year, yes. right? Lord. So that's the information we also need. I think that we need to, I, I don't know that we need to have, do it with Harold right now. I don't know, right? I think we allow you guys some times to say, what, what are, we, are we gonna do it this year? Are we gonna do it the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, where are we, where are we at? Right, Yeah. so, and then a lot of lots dependent on that. Right. Okay. Again, being able to update our software, um, and are we bringing in new software kind of a thing? So we're kind of in that evaluation period as well. Um, so a lot of that's dependent, but our goal is to hopefully no, I don't want to say hopefully is this year start tracking some of those things. Being able to yeah, but and what I'm saying is not immediate. This would be further on down the line. Sure, no. I think it's definitely a goal of ours. Well, okay, if you, if you support the, the goal, that's good, and we'll defer it for a, a meeting or two, or until you have more information also yes. on your system. Okay, good. Would it be useful to summarize those domains, for me to summarize those and get to the board? Yeah, the domains. Uh, well, that's, that's one way of doing it. They're, they're in this book. If you don't have one, get it. get it. I can send you the information to get it. Okay. Or unless some, we maybe could distribute some next meeting. They're in here. Yeah. yeah Where would next time? Yeah. Where would we get those? Uh, the, uh, the agency on aging. aging. Okay. Or just area some agency on aging. Yeah, I'll spend by and pick up some. Yeah. And the other thing would be just go through the topical areas of the support services. Okay. Covers the same kind of thing. So there's a couple of different ways I can do that. Okay. Uh, Ronnie. Yeah.
Um, you all have my manager's report, so I just want to kind of hit on some key highlights. Um, as you all know, that we, our, um, Robin Bosica has accepted a different position in the city, and her last day was last Friday. Last week, we conducted interviews for our vacant administrative assistant position, and we've hired Bianca Acosta as our new administrative Welcome. assistant. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. She's official as of Monday, this Monday, the 5th. Um, Bianca was our office assistant before that, and before that we stole her from recreation. So she's been in the city for a while, <laughs> and we're just very excited for this opportunity for Bianca. We have currently posted that vacancy, Bianca's previous position, the office assistant uh, position, as bilingual required. So that was posted as of Monday as well, and um, I took a look peek at it. Um, Yesterday, and I think we had six applicants already. So, already. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Congratulations. All, yeah. Also, want to inform the board that I currently have had a conversation and meeting with an uh, approved architect with the city to discuss building expansions here at the senior center. Uh, my goal and recommendation is to see if we can close off that back patio area and extend our back offices. Uh, we're talking about additional staff members to meet the needs of our community. Right now, if that is approved today, we have nowhere to put them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I would like to create four to five new um, offices and that uh, if, if we continue where the offices are uh, to expand towards our room G over here. Right now, our building's in a U shape. And so I just like to kind of wall that area off across with additional offices. So that give us four to five additional offices, my recommendation four to five additional offices. Room G, that one back here in the corner, it's a smaller space, it's almost half of this, not very functional. I'd like to expand that out a little bit to make it around this size, uh, a little closer to this size. And then in front of that, have um, in front of that coming closer to us where we're at right now. Um, we've, I guess this board has not had any, any meetings in our D and E room. It's our largest room with a partition. So it's a big space that can house up to, I think, up to 70, 60, 70. Mm -hmm. And then if we cut it in half, 30, 35. So and that's entered from the walkway coming in the front door, right? Yeah. So okay. when you come to the front door, it'll be on your right hand side right okay. there. Yes. Okay. And so that will give us another big room like that for programming again okay. as our programming increases. So um, um, have, have started that conversation just to see where, where, where we can take it. Um, yes. What happens to the lunchroom? It's not impacted. Okay. So will it lose its windows? Nope. Oh, okay. The, it's um. So if we when we come out of this room right here, and if we go straight back towards the lunchroom, yeah. it's just that side over here. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So I'm thinking of it where the billiard room okay. is. Where the billiard room gotcha. is oh, behind yeah. it. Gotcha. Where those windows are. Yeah. Can we build up here? Yeah, yeah. I was going to be remarkable. Yeah. You can't what? Well. I'll double check, but that's not the, from what I heard, it kind of sounded like they could not just because we have two different roofing s structures oh. because of the expansions, previous expansions. I think they would have to um, take a separate cost take more a money whole to take this out to redo it. Yeah. But that's a good idea because that little patio out there. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just don't use there, right? it. Just I come here all the time and I've never there's, seen there's it. Nothing, there's nothing, right? right? So yeah. just just being forward thinking again as Wizard continue continues to grow, um, and so that discussion that person is connect in contact with key players, uh, and I can't say who or they're just not because I don't know who. <laughs> um, their their exact titles I should say to be a part of that discussion for um, for approval for 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 like zoning and things like that just to make sure that everything is okay. Um, and so I will follow up with him in the next week or so. And so by our next meeting, I can come back with some uh, information, Ho hopefully if that meeting takes place. Of, uh, you know, what, what's been discussed at that point. Kind of want to share some statistics with you as well. So our door count for this door count, so we have two uh, entrances, a uh, combined total of 88,209 visitors um, this past year. So a lot of people come through through our doors. Um, is that duplicated? No. It's unduplicated? Yes. Oh, no. no it's, duplicated. 
the count is undeducated? It's yeah. just interest. It's just interest. Just interest. Yeah, sorry. Interest. Interest. Yeah, sorry. Okay. sorry. Yeah. Um, and then just also some great things happening here. So not only do we have 88,000, over 88,000 people come through our door, our senior tech connect, um, uh, there just a lot to highlight there. Uh, they, they, they hosted 192 sessions for our community uh, with a total of 2,695 participants for those programs. Um, and with that, we have 36 volunteers in that group who provided 5,605 hours of service. So they did a lot for us this year. Um, yeah, and they, that's why, you know, and we're really happy that our friends were, uh, friends of Longmont were able to help improve our Wi-Fi for those reasons, those groups keep growing. And so we needed better Wi-Fi this past year and they helped fund that. We also knit and furl. They donated 1,976 uh, sweaters, combination of sweaters, winter hats, scarves, infant sleep sacks, and blankets. Um, that's we're again really staggering numbers, and since 1999, they've uh, they've created 45,904 items that they've donated. So a lot of good things coming out of here. As for our recreation programming, uh, we offered 280 wellness uh, activities and programs, 104 therapeutic recreation programs, 138 trips offered, and 325 active volunteers supporting our program trips and peer support this past year. So very fortunate to have so many volunteers helping in different, many different capacities um, here at the Senior Center. We're actually gonna expand those opportunities for them as well and have them do a little bit more uh, forward-facing customer service support as well for us. Uh, we're, uh, Amy's working with Valerie, our program, one of our program coordinators to uh, help, help uh, create those opportunities this year. For, for our volunteers. Um, the new Go Out, our new Go magazine is out for the spring, which is March through May. And we're currently on work, oh, yep, and we're currently working on getting extended travel up and running. So we've been working with um, um, with a couple, couple different groups around the city uh, just to get that up and running. So hopefully soon here, we'll be able to start putting the, uh, advertising those trips, um, extended travel trips in our Go magazine. The Go magazine is put out in Four. No, four. they count three magazines oh, to print. Oh, do we print at the top of my I'll have to get those numbers. Um, a, a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we, print, we print a lot of them and we go through all of them. And we really so, do go through all I mean you go through all of them? Yes. That's Bianca, great. this uh, past season we just run out of um, like mm. right at the yeah. right on time. I was gonna say yeah. I saw a couple right before it was gonna the new one was coming out and I laughed. I thought They'll just have enough to coast into the new one. Yeah, I think at the beginning numbers. of the month, we had one, one box left. Yeah. And each box has, what, roughly like 30 to 50, maybe? Maybe five dozen. Yeah. Six, 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 six. So, also, so some key highlights for our support and services. Um, we've also helped hire in that space for a resource. Uh, Specialists on at the LHA properties, so they're not they're not under my umbrella. Like we, we don't fund that position, but we supervise that position because we have resource specialists here. So Brandy Queen um, um, supervises um, Leo, and I'm sorry, I should have said his name, Leo uh, Oliveras, and he started a month ago. I think he's a month in this position, and um, so that that's going to help our resource. Uh, services to them as well because that they won't be able, they won't there won't be as much need to provide those supports for LAJ residents here exactly. at the senior center because he'll be that on-site support there. Can I just say real quick? I know that he was at our place from from eight to twelve on Mondays. Yeah, and uh, he just introduced himself. I wasn't able to make it, but yeah. he came over on Monday for the first time. Yes, very nice guy. Yes, very, people very, are very happy about it. Yeah, I'm very happy to have them on the team. <clears throat> Currently at this moment, there's no wait list for counseling services. Of course, that could change at any time. <laughs> um, just as you to, say it. But that's just, that's the right? And this is just, a, it's worth, worth, worth highlighting and celebrating that uh, in the moment while it's, that that's the case, right? Uh, annual statistics. Um, our... Oh, yep, sorry. I think, let me go back to, um, 
yeah, our support and services, sorry. So uh, collectively, uh, our resource support, resource services team saw 774, 774 new individuals this past year uh, seeking support. And again, that, that's a key, key, and I, I'm gonna pull those statistics for since 2020 when that increased the second year to help again paint that picture of mm -hmm. the way the community's grown and why we need additional staff members when we're bringing in 774 <clears throat> new people. Right, right. that's three to four weeks to get in. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes longer, right? Yeah. And with that, they've made um, 3,380 contacts, 3,380 contacts with <clears throat> clients. Uh, so that's in-person uh, meetings, uh, uh, supports, or by telephone as well. I didn't put this in here and I just wanted to add that. Um, so of that, that's 3,380 contacts and collectively um, they've supported 1,358 clients with that. So obviously showing that some of them are duplicate um, uh, appointments and, and meetings. Our counseling support service team <coughs> conducted, of that, our counseling support service team conducted 1,040 appointments in 2023. Uh, so. Of that, 21% <laughs> um, of twenty-one percent of our clients were Spanish speakers, which was 291 individuals of that 1,358. So definitely need there to make sure that that's close to the area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, he needs a new resource. Two. 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 Two resource specialist. I make a motion that we support the acquisition of two or more resource specialists. Two or more, okay. I second. Second, any discussion? Good, mm -hmm. all those in favor say aye. 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 I entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion. Okay. Go ahead. No. <laughs> Let Eric and do a second. it. Second. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, thank you so much, it's been a very good meeting I think and you've all done some really good work, appreciate it. So, yes, and that's hoping our new board members do as well, so I can go grab new tags for everybody. Your name tags came in, I left them on me. Excuse me, you left them on my desk. So, can I go grab that real quick? Can I grab you? And then you on your way out.